Recently, the German Air Force revealed a new fighter jet. What are the features of the aircraft? How is it different from earlier options? Where the German Air Force is going to use it? Today, we are going to discuss all these things. Hello friends, welcome back to Future Warplanes. We are back here again with an interesting video. The German Air Force revealed this VTOL fighter jet, so we are going to do its post-mortem. So stick with the video and watch till the end to know everything about it. Before that, let us know in the comment box what you know about a fighter jet. Also, subscribe to our channel to watch more videos like this. Let's start with the video. An aircraft is said to have the capability of vertical takeoff and landing, often abbreviated as VTOL, if it can hover, take off and land vertically without the need for a runway. This categorization may cover a wide range of aircraft, such as helicopters, thrust vectoring fixed-wing aircraft, and other hybrid aircraft with powered rotors like gyrodynes and cyclogyros cyclocopters. Some types of vertical takeoff and landing aircraft are also capable of flying in other flight modes such as conventional takeoff and landing, short takeoff and landing, and short takeoff and vertical landing. Due to the absence of landing gear that is capable of managing taxiing, certain aircraft, such as certain types of helicopters, are unable to operate in any other manner than by vertical takeoff and landing. The VSTOL category includes VTOL as one of its subcategories. This has been a very quick primer. We certainly do hope you are finding this film entertaining. If so, please tell us in the space provided here. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel. Some aircraft that are lighter than air also meet the requirements to be classified as VTOL aircraft since they are able to hover, take off, and land using vertical approach and departure profiles. In the pursuit of completely autonomous personal air vehicles, the development of electric and hybrid electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft, sometimes known as EVTOLs, is now underway. Tilt rotor aircraft such as the Bell Boeing V-22 Osprey and thrust vectoring airplanes such as the Harrier family and the new F-35B Lightning II Joint Strike Fighter are the two types of vertical takeoff and landing aircraft that are currently in use by the military. Helicopters continue to be the most common type of aircraft used by the military. At this time, helicopters are the only form of aircraft that are often used in the civilian sector. Some other types of commercial VTOL aircraft have been proposed and are under development as of 2017. When compared to pure VTOL, STOVL often results in a large increase in takeoff weight, range, or payload. As a general rule, VTOL aircraft that are capable of STOVL make use of it whenever it is practical to do so. The concept of vertical flying has been known for thousands of years and Leonardo da Vinci had illustrations for vertical takeoff and landing aircraft in his notebook. In 1907, the first manned vertical takeoff and landing aircraft took to the skies in the form of early helicopters. However, it would not be until after World War II that these aircraft would reach their full potential. Henry Berliner's 1922-1925 experimental horizontal rotor fixed-wing aircraft, Nikola Tesla's 1928 patent for relatively impractical VTOL fixed-wing airplanes with tilting engines, and George Leiberger's 1930 patent for relatively impractical VTOL fixed-wing airplanes were all attempts to develop practical aircraft with the capability of vertical takeoff and landing. In addition to the development of helicopters, many other methods have also been tried. At the tail end of the 1930s, British aircraft inventor Leslie Everett Baines was granted a patent for his tilt-rotor aircraft concept, which he called the Baines Helicopter. The German designer Henrik Fock started working on the Fock at Gellis Fa 269 in 1941. This aircraft was intended to have two rotors that angled downward for vertical takeoff. However, the development of the aircraft was interrupted due to bombardment during the war. In May of 1951, Contracts were given to both Lockheed and Convair in an effort to design, build, and test two experimental VTOL aircraft. Lockheed was granted the contract, while Convair was awarded the contract. Convair was responsible for manufacturing the Convair XFY Pogo, whereas Lockheed was responsible for manufacturing the XFV. Both of the experimental projects were able to advance to the flying state and complete their test flights between 1954 and 55, before the contracts were terminated. In a similar manner, the X-13 carried out a number of test flights between the years 1955 and 57, but it too met the same unfortunate end. During the 1950s, research was done looking at the possibility of using vertical fans that were powered by motors. 
the U.S. successfully manufactured an airplane in which the fans were powered by the exhaust from the jet engines, but British proposals that were never constructed featured fans that were driven by mechanical drives from the jet engines. Other VTOL aircraft, such as the Bell XV-15 research craft, have been flown by NASA, as have also been flown by the Soviet Navy and the Luftwaffe. Sikorsky conducted test flights on an aircraft known as the X-Wing, which was designed to take off in a manner similar to that of a helicopter. In the middle of the flight, the rotors would stop rotating and take on the role of wings, contributing additional lift to what was already being provided by the static wings. The Boeing X-50 is a canard rotor wing prototype that implements a concept quite similar to this one. This is why we are delving into the specifics of the ship design. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to our channel and feel free to leave any thoughts or questions below. Another one of the British government's ideas for a vertical takeoff and landing aircraft was the Gyrodyne, which features a rotor that was powered during takeoff and landing but that freewheeled the rest of the time in the air. Separate propulsion engines supplied the aircraft with forwarding thrust. This type of aircraft began with the Ferry Gyrodyne and later developed into the much larger twin-engine Ferry Rotodyne. The Ferry Rotodyne used tip jets to power the rotor during takeoff and landing, but it later switched to using two Napier Eland turboprops, driving conventional propellers mounted on substantial wings for propulsion. The wings also served to unload the rotor while it was in horizontal flight. In order to offer short-haul airliner service from city centers to airports, the Rotodyne was designed to combine the fuel economy of a fixed-wing aircraft when it is cruising with the vertical takeoff and landing capabilities of a helicopter. Canadair was the company that was responsible for the design and production of the Canadian VSTOL turbine tilt-wing monoplane known as the CL-84 between the years 1964 and 1972. In 1968, the federal government of Canada placed an order for three modernized CL-84s, which were given the designation CL-84-1. These were to be used for military testing. This variant was shown and assessed to the U.S. from 1972 to 1974 on the aircraft carriers USS Guam and USS Guadalcanal, as well as a variety of other locations. These tests were carried out with the participation of military pilots from the U.S., the U.K., and Canada. During the course of the testing, two of the CL-84s were involved in accidents owing to mechanical problems. Nevertheless, there was no loss of life as a direct consequence of these mishaps. There were not any production contracts concluded as a consequence. Although tilt rotors like the Fock Achilles Fa 269 from the middle of the 1940s and the Centro Tecnico Aeroespacial Convertoplano from the 1950s reached testing or mock-up phases, the V-22 Osprey is believed to be the world's first production tilt rotor aircraft. Each of the wingtips is outfitted with a transmission nacelle, a turboprop engine, and a proprietor with three blades. The Osprey is a multi-role aircraft that is capable of both VTOL as well as STOL. It is intended to carry out operations in the same manner as a conventional helicopter while also providing the extended range and high-speed cruise capability of an aircraft powered by turboprops. The Osprey is categorized as a kind of powered lift aircraft by the Federal Aviation Administration. In the 1960s, there were a number of attempts made to create a commercial passenger aircraft that was capable of vertical takeoff and landing. Two rows of lifting fans were proposed to be placed on each side of the proposed Hawker Sidley Intercity vertical lift. Despite this, none of these aircraft was ever put into production since it was determined that they were both too cumbersome and too costly to fly. This video will end here. Hopefully, you enjoyed our video. Drop a like and a remark if this is the case. Don't forget to add our channel to your subscriptions and click the bell symbol to be notified when we upload new videos. Thanks for watching.